Dobra. Dobrze. Um, hello, hello, comrades. Uh, today we are continue our discussion with Professor Bruno Drueski. Hello, Bruno. Hello. So uh, this is this is um, um, second episode of our discussion about um, about uh, Polish communist uh, Władysław Gomułka. In uh, first uh, first episode. We are speaking about um, the events in the Baltic coast in 1970. And today I would like to tell, talk about uh, biography politic of Gomuka, starting um, for the beginning, for the activity politic um, before, um, before Second World War. So uh, I would like to go on with our conversation following the chronology. Could you briefly describe Gomuka pre-war political activity? What class did he be belong to? What about his union activities or about establishing contact with the uh, Communist Party of Poland? What about his stay in the USSR uh, during the training of the Comintern? Why was Gomuka imprisoned during the assassination period? So Gomuka was um, uh, coming from a very little town in southern Poland, Krosno, very, very little and very poor town. And um, he was um, he was worker. He was worker in this town, but in very small factory. And um, uh, for sure, he was uh, um, uh, not member of the mass working class, but he was a worker and he was worker in a very conservative region because basically Krosno region is a very traditionalistic, Catholic uh, uh, and poor uh, peasant re region. Uh, so we can we, we 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 must assume he was a worker. We must assume he was even member of the trade unions and communist party of Poland. But in the same time, he was not in the center of the let's say the the, the, the main working class area and the main uh, working class leader from the communist party. And of course, he was member of this party as a let's say a secondary man. Uh, 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 and he endured, of course, repression as all communist uh, activists were and you uh, were having. And we can say he was uh, uh, part of this uh, of this uh, um, this uh, uh, repress repressive uh, policy from the di dictatorship. But he was not a leader. He was just a, a, a grassroots member of the party, um, active in his re mainly in his region. And what changed is because uh, when the par the communist party was um, 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 was um, abolished by the Comintern in 1938, he was not actually uh, active anymore. And um, uh, but he found he, himself in uh, Lwów, in in the uh, former Eastern Polish territory during the, uh, the, the uh, after 1939. And Lwów was, of course, uh, a, a city um, uh, that was uh, uh, that joined um, Ukrainian Socialist Soviet Republic and then USSR. And at that time, there was no no no. Um, Communist Party of Poland, and uh, uh, he was not member of the Communist Party of Soviet Union. He was a uh, union uh, local in the factory he was working in Lwów. He was a he was a, a union uh, leader. He was active in the union uh, 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 in the union uh, in the trade union uh, organization of this factory, and even he was known locally by by local people people partly Polish, partly Jewish, partly Ukrainian, as one of the man leading meetings, local meetings of the trade union. But it was also very, let's say, ba basic, basic uh, activity. It was not a, 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 a very important uh, activity, even within the, the Soviet trade union system. 
And uh, later, um, uh, he found himself under German occupation, of course, um, uh, because when the German uh, attacked Soviet Union, he was in Lvov, and then he 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 managed to go back to what is nowadays Poland, and he joined the PPR, the Polish Workers' Party. And the Polish Workers' Party was a very a tiny party at the beginning, and um, uh, it was uh, a party which had different, uh, uh, um, let's say, political problems or, or personal problems. It's, uh, it depends uh, um, um, of opinion of historian. But anyway, the, the, the two first uh, leader of the party were killed, and uh, then he took the leadership of the party in 1943, um, and he, 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 he became the leader of the party. Uh, and what is important is that uh, we don't really know the reason, because there are different interpretations, but what is known is that the, uh, the party didn't have contact with Soviet Union at that time, because the radio apparatus uh, didn't uh, function. And some people say that um, uh, it is because uh, uh, Gomuka and the leadership of the party didn't manage to, to repair the, 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 the contacts, uh, because they couldn't do it for technical reason. Other people say that uh, Gomuka didn't really seriously wanted to have uh, contacts with uh, with uh, Moscow. Uh, so, because his conception was that the Polish Workers' Party was a party that that had to use mostly the national liberation um, argumentation, because um, Polish. Uh, uh, workers and especially Polish peasants uh, can be mobilized quite easily in their fight against German imperialism, German occupation, and in the same time against um, the um, capitalist uh, concentration process, uh, economical concentration process, but uh, without using Marxist and especially communistic. Uh, uh, pro-Soviet communistic argumentation that would make uh, uh, PPR, Chile, uh, uh, the Polish Workers' Party, unpopular. Whatever we can, we can, uh, we can uh, 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 think because uh, there, it, it's a question of, of uh, that is um, not very clear, which is which is normal because it's a wartime occupation condition and we have no documents for uh, about all this uh, all what happened at that time for obvious reason of security but anyway it's obvious that gomuka was the leader of the of the uh, an orientation uh, giving um, giving to polish communists a more national look than uh, they had in the pre-war period. What is important to know is that uh, even if we don't really know uh, why uh, PPR leadership and Gomuka had, con had no, con uh, no radio contact with Moscow uh, in 1943 uh, and the beginning of 1944, um uh, we can uh, we, we have to to take into account the fact that the, the the Polish workers party did manage to create what is called Krajowa Rada Narodowa which means the the something like a united national front under the leadership of the Polish workers party but with some groups coming from socialist or agrarian uh, peasant uh, parties and even uh, uh, even left liberal parties such as the democ the so called democrats and uh, when when the KRL, when this uh, structure was created um, uh, then the uh, this structure uh, decided to send to moscow a delegation and that was the f the, the, the first time uh, 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 contact was were renewed by by um, uh, Polish communists with um, the internal uh, Polish communists with Soviet Union, and uh, it happened that we know from Moscow that uh, at that time 
um, uh, Soviet Union, Soviet communists were preparing in Soviet Union, Polish communists, to have a, a leading role in the, in the uh, liberated Poland. Uh, we had the Polish Berlin army and we had especially the uh, Związek Patriotów Polski, it means the uh, union of, of Polish patriots, and within the Union of Polish Patriots in Moscow, we had the Central Bureau of Polish Communists that was working. And um, at, uh, at the beginning of 1944, the Soviets were preparing this Polish structure, more or less linked with Polish communists in Moscow, to, to take um, control of the Polish liberated area. And, and uh, at that moment, the, uh, the, uh, the PPR, the Polish Workers' Party, and the KRN, this, this uh, reunited front structure, did manage to send to Moscow a delegation. They sent, in fact, a delegation which was um, which crossed the Bug River, of course, illegally because it was under German occupation, and they went to Belarusia because in Belarusia you had uh, strong areas that were under the the, the partisans' um, authority, and they managed to go to the Pinsk area, to the 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 the, 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 the very deep forest of Belarusia, when they found uh, 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 partisans and. Uh, the, this base of partisans was so strong that Soviet plane landed there and took the delegation of the KRN to Moscow. Then Stalin discovered, uh, Stalin and the Soviet leadership discovered, they knew that there was the Polish Workers' Party in Poland, but they didn't really know knew what was happening there. But they, they suddenly discovered that the, this PPR created the KRN, the, 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 the United Front structure I told, told about, and apparently the, 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 we have um, some information from the Soviet side that the Soviet leadership decided to uh, give the main, uh, the main uh, authority in liberated Poland not only to the Polish communists in Moscow, but partly on the um, uh, local uh, communists uh, uh, who Soviet leadership thought they were much, much more aware of what is the real situation of Poland. And that's, that's important because we, we understand from that time that the Soviet leadership and Stalin um, uh, were, uh, uh, let's say, um, uh, not respecting, but they were. Uh, they, they, uh, Stalin always thought Gomułka and uh, let's say national uh, uh, nationalist left uh, 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 is important in Poland and cannot be uh, eliminated. Uh, and it's very important because it also explains why. Uh, even Stalin was always very tolerant toward the General Berlin, who, who was not a communist, who was a, a, a military, or rather of socialist orientation. And um, even when the, the hardline, let's say, so, uh, quote, hardline communists uh, were uh, criticizing Gomuka, were criticizing Berlin, and were criticizing all what they called the nationalists in Poland, uh, uh, Stalin was always very um, uh, reluctant to, 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 to make them um, uh, uh, repressed on the same line, let's say, as the repression would happen in other uh, Eastern European countries. And that that's for a very realistic reason. Uh, the, the, I, I told you last time that um, uh, Soviet leadership and Stalin especially were uh, very conscious of two basic questions concerning Poland. First of all, of course, a demographic uh, 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 question. Uh, Poland, of course, has much more population than other uh, Eastern European countries. And uh, the, in this situation, Soviet Union cannot treat Poland as, for example, a, a little Baltic states or uh, former Baltic states or, 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 or a little nation of Eastern Europe. That's one thing. The second thing, um, Soviet leadership was very conscious of the fact that even if Poland was a rather conservative country, a rather conservative society on, on let's say, ideological ground, 
uh, 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 Pol Polish society was uh, almost entirely mobilized uh, in the fight against German occupation and against Nazi occupation, which was very basically different uh, uh, from the situation we could observe in Ukraine, in Baltic states, in Romania, in Hungary, uh, or even in Slovakia, where you had very strong pro-Nazi uh, group. Um, and uh, 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 for these two reasons, uh, uh, Soviet leadership was always much more, let's say, tolerant uh, ab ab um, about what can be called uh, the nationalistic orientation in Poland. They tried rather to use it uh, against the German imperialism, against Nazi occupation, but um, they were much more... Um, 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 ready to make compromise with that orientation. And that can explain why Gomułka was um, uh, considered in Moscow at the Stalin time as a um, um, difficult leader uh, from the ideological Marxist-Leninist point of view, that's for sure. But on the other side, uh, it was uh, uh, considered that he was... Um, representing quite truly a deep-rooted feeling in Polish popular classes. And, um, and this, this, this point of view was quite interesting, because in the communist movement, Polish communist movement, in the pre-war period, we had uh, two uh, very important uh, reasons why people went, became communist. Of course, um, as everywhere in the world, uh, anti uh, uh, truly anti-capitalist people and anti-fascistic people were becoming communists for class reasons. It's, it's, it's obvious, it was in Poland like everywhere, um, the communists were the, 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 uh, the vanguard of the most radical, uh, 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 socially speaking, uh, um, uh, opposition to the uh, leading system. And uh, that's why, of course, you had a lot of workers in the communist movement and you had also uh, quite a lot of poor peasants in the communist movement. So you had people going in the communist party for class reason. But in the same time, in Poland, you had about 10% of the population were Jews. Uh, so uh, the Jews in Poland were very strongly uh, uh, oppressed as a national minority and oppressed, of course, most of them as a lower class uh, population, because, of course, you had the big, uh, rich Jewish bourgeoisie on the upside, but, but the mass of Jews uh, in Poland were proletarians or, um, or even uh, um, semi-proletarians. Uh, and, and the class reason uh, in the Jewish population was one of the reasons also you had quite a lot of Jews in the Communist Party. But in the other side, you had also quite a lot of Jews coming to the Communist Party, especially from the so-called middle classes that became communists, not for class reason, but for uh, 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 the reason that, of course, the Communist Party was, in fact, the only political party in Poland, which was not created on ethnical basis. Uh, and it was the only real internationalistic party. I mean, uh, uh, the question of being Jew, Ukrainian, Pole in the Communist Party was officially non-existing. Uh, because if we look at all other political parties existing in Poland um, in the pre-war period, they were all built on ethnic, uh, ethnic um, uh, um, uh, principle. Of course, the right wing party were nationalistic, racistic, xenophobic, anti-Semitic, and whatever you want. But even the left parties um, uh, that were cooperating uh, 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 were always based on uh, ethnic uh, uh, ethnic uh, principle. It means, for example, you have the Polish Socialist Party, which was the socialist, social democratic party for Poles. This party was cooperating with the Jewish Bund, which was the socialist party for Jews, which was cooperative, uh, cooperating with the Selrob uh, 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 movement in Ukraine, in, in Polish Ukraine, which was the social democratic party for 
uh, Ukrainians. And all these parties were, co were cooperating, but they were different parties. Um, of course, in the communist movement, you had not this. In the communist movement, you were communist. You were communist, uh, whatever you, you were, if you were Pole, Jew, Belarusian, Lithuanian, German, whatever you want, you, you were in the same party without any uh, uh, national ethnical structure. So it was, of course, very appealing for, um, uh, uh, um, um, let's say, middle class minorities. Uh, and especially for Jewish uh, middle class people to join communism because of uh, its uh, um, uh, non anti Semitic uh, um, um, uh, uh, policies and because the fact in that uh, 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 in the Communist Party uh, um, you were not treated as a Jew, you were treated as a communist. Um, and, uh, of course, to become communist in the pre-war period was a, 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 a hope that uh, after the revolution, uh, the uh, Jewish question will not exist, because in a socialist con uh, society, uh, uh, the national question is solved automatically, and people are just uh, 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 um, uh, different for, for class and ideological reason, and not for uh, their origin. So there were quite a lot of Jews that went to the Communist Party, not really for class reason, but for uh, the... Uh, uh, the, the reason that the Communist Party was the only party they, can, can, they could feel, let's say, at home. Uh, it means the only political party that was not uh, asking uh, the question, uh, what is your ethnic belong? And, um, uh, but in the, in, uh, during the war, and especially after the war, um, the, the situation did, did change because um uh, at a certain moment uh, 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 the, the, the the question the national question began to to to, to be important because uh, gomuka uh, especially during the war was launching uh, a very strong uh, national liberation arg uh, argumentation and to a certain extent we can say that he was uh, uh, promoting it's, it can be discussed, debated, but anyway, we can we can assume he was promoting nationalist feeling. Uh, Poland, you have to liberate your country. Uh, this country is for Poles. Uh, Poland has to change its, its borders ac uh, according to national and Polish interest. Poland, 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 and um, for for people coming to the Communist Party to let's say, escape from nationality question, especially Jewish people that came to the Communist Party uh, uh, hoping that in this party there will be no qu national question. Uh, they discovered a man, a leader, who was uh, talking all the time about the nation, of course, in a non-racistic way. Uh, Gomuka, of course, was not uh, anti-Semitic, that's, uh, that's of course, uh, his wife was Jewish, uh, she was Jewish, uh, and uh, she was with him uh, uh, until his death. Uh, but uh, anyway, he was using very strong uh, uh, national feelings, um, uh, and uh, this began to create some tensions, uh, not very strong during the war, but more and more important after the war, um, and um, and uh, um, uh, and on that point. We can say that until 1948, the Soviet Union and St Soviet leadership and Stalin in particular were, were trying to, to, to balance the, let's say, national feeling uh, uh, orientation of Gomuka and the, let's say, cosmopolitic uh, orientation of the hardline, let's say, quote, uh, of the hard, hardline Stalins, uh, Stalinists, which were, who were most of them from Jewish origin. And uh, uh, in the same time, and this complicated the situation, in the same time, Soviet Union discovered it had made quite a, a, an error uh, 
supporting the creation of the state of Israel because the uh, uh, Soviet Union and especially Polish communists uh, helped uh, Zionists uh, in Poland uh, in the year 1946-1947. So when Gomułka was was the leader of the party, um, the Polish officers were training the Haganah in the Bolkov uh, military center. Uh, so they were actively promoting Zionist uh, army uh, in Palestine. Uh, training them, so they went to Palestine and, and of course, helped to create the Israel army, and um, and um, uh, and um, uh, at that time, uh, 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 um, on the same time, uh, Gomuka was very much aware uh, that the let's say national problem in the. Polish Workers' Party was existing because a lot of the, let's say, right-wing or extreme right-wing propaganda in Poland aimed to present that the new regime was, in, let's, of course, quote, Jewish regime uh, on the base of quite a lot of Polish leaders after the Second World War were from, Polish, uh, from Jewish origin. So um, uh, 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 we can assume that Gomuka was helping Zionists in the, in the, uh, with the idea most Polish Jews will go to Palestine and Israel. Israel will become a socialist country, will join the socialist camp. And in Poland, we will get rid of this question because there will be only uh, a Polish party for Poles and the Jewish party for Jewish in Israel. And, um, and but this situation, uh, didn't uh, didn't of course succeeded because after Israel was created, uh, Israel didn't uh, didn't went on the left side but on the right side, and uh, during the visit of Golda Meir in Moscow in 1948, um, she, there was a huge crowd of of Jewish uh, of Soviet Jews in Moscow die, die, who. Uh, uh, greeted her with very strong nationalist, national, nationalist Jewish people. And from that time, uh, the Soviet leadership began to uh, discover that the Jewish nationalism was still existing, uh, and that this nationalism was not pushing Jews in the left direction, but rather in the right direction, in the pro direction. And that's the reason why, um, when the tensions become, became in the Polish party, um, uh, the so-called Stalinist hardliner uh, uh, changed the leadership, and at the place of, of Gomuka, um, uh, the, 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 he was replaced by Bolesław Bierut, um, which was much more, let's say, Moscow-oriented um, uh, communist. But in the same time, we have also to acknowledge that uh, Stalin um, accepted the fact that Gomuka was arrested, but he uh, all uh, Soviet leadership didn't um, didn't really wanted to have a process, a, a political process. Gomuka, and that's the basic difference with other socialist countries, where in other socialist countries, all revisionist elements, I mean, all part of the revisionist elements were tra uh, tried uh, and, and even executed. We have in Czechoslovakia, in Hungary, in Romania, in Bulgaria. We have two basic ex exceptions it is Poland and German Democratic Republic. German Democratic Republic is, of course, another situation because it's linked with the German question. We don't talk about now, but it's another question. But in Poland, especially, uh, the, 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 the repression uh, against uh, Gomułka was, um, let's say, a light repression. He was, uh, um, he was arrested, but he was not tried. Uh, and that's why he survived. Uh, and we can even say that there was something like a balance because he was arrested as a, mm, a communist and at the same time they arrested Wyszynski who was the leader of the Polish church um, and who also was not tried but put in, 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 a, in a, let's say, a monastery where, where he had no, no right to, to leave. Um, so we can say that, uh, uh, of course, within the Polish communist, uh, there was no, um, um, let's say, uh, very strong uh, policies to repress uh, uh, political enemies. Uh, and in the same time, we can 
think that Moscow was in favor of uh, such compromise. Um, in the case, Polish situation would evolve, and in this case, uh, such a man uh, which, who had, let's say, national legitimacy, like Gomuka, uh, 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 would be useful. Because Gomuka had this national legitimacy because he was uh, the leader of a party who carried resistance against the Nazi occupation, that's for sure. And that was not linked with Moscow during the time of his leadership uh, in the resistance because of this radio uh, technical or not technical problems uh, of, 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 rela of relation with Moscow. And we can assume that even in Moscow, they were, the, the, the situation, the position of Gomuka was never very, very clear. Uh, and I, I, I can defend that point of view because uh, not only um, uh, Gomuka, but for example, the general I told you about earlier, Berlin, who was for sure not a communist, a socialist. Um, uh, uh, he was uh, always, let's say, under the protection of Soviet Union. It means that when people like Bierut, like Berman, were attacking Be uh, Berlin very strongly, uh, uh, Stalin never accepted uh, uh, Berlin, for example, to be arrested for the first uh, 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 for the first period in from 1944 to 1947. Uh, 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 the protection of Stalin to Berlin that was that he took him to Moscow uh, and there he was uh, training uh, officers of the Soviet army. Uh, so it was under Soviet protection, let's say, um, and not led to, to, to Polish um, communists. And later he went to Poland back and then he was the leader of the forest administration of Poland, which is a state uh, administration, not very important politically, of course, but still uh, 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 um, uh, he was not repressed, he was not arrested and so on. So we can assume that uh, for all the time Stalin um, did, uh, 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 did um, protect, uh, let's say, the national uh, wing within the Polish left, uh, taking into account um, his own experience concerning Poland, uh, where he knew, because we have to, to know, um, Stalin was even in Poland before the First World War in, with Lenin, and um, he, 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 he learned, in fact, the national question mostly uh, in the Krakow University Library, where he was reading books, uh, preparing his, his theories about national questions. So Stalin was quite uh, aware of the Polish national question, and um, he uh, always thought that Poles were uh, quite nationalistic, but that this uh, nation is important in the balance of power um, in, in Europe between Germany, especially, and, and, and Russia and then Soviet Union. And that um, um, uh, Soviet Union has to use the, nas the Polish national feeling uh, in the direction of a, let's say, pro-Soviet orientation rather and pro-Slavic orientation rather than uh, German and or uh, orientation. And that also explains why in Poland after the war uh, in the... <laughs> No. Um, a, a, a Slavic Congress uh, with Yugoslavs and Soviets and Czechs, um, and uh, also a, a something very, um, very complicated from the Marxist point of view, uh, the fact that um, um, one of the leaders of, of a fascist group openly fascist Polish group uh, in the pre-war period <laughs> during the occupation, which is called Bolesław Piasecki, uh, which had a, a, a responsibility in uh, uh, killing Jews and Soviet partisans during the Second <laughs> War. So it's, he's for sure a, a fascist. Uh, uh, was uh, in 1945 liberated from the prison 
in Lublin, because of course he was arrested by Soviet security service, and he was in the Lublin uh, security uh, uh, in, in Lublin prison, and the prison was uh, um, in the prison you uh, had um, Ivan Sierov, which was the the vice uh, chairman of the NKVD of the. Of the Soviet security movement uh, who visited this prison and had a very long conversation with Piasecki and at the end Piasecki was freed and um, he began to create under Soviet supervision a right-wing movement, openly right-wing movement uh, 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 that existed all over the history of People's Poland um, on the basis of uh, the ideology that um, uh, Poles are Slavs, Poles must be, uh, must be uh, in alliance with the Slavic country, which is Soviet Union. And uh, Piasecki, even in one of his um, uh, meetings in 1947, um, uh, 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 told officially, publicly, and it was published in Poland, that it's not uh, the right wing in Poland that became communists, it's the communists that became the right wing because they are defending uh, Polish borders, Polish alliance policy that the extreme right in, Pol in Poland was defending before the Second World War and that in fact uh, 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 Polish communists became patriots on the right wing uh, uh, um, uh, orientation and not the right wing became 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 left. So we can be, of course, astonished if we understand that this Piasecki man uh, was uh, an official leader in the Polish People's Republic. Uh, he was member of the parliament all the time and he was uh, um, uh, 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 very pro-Moscow. I wouldn't say pro-Soviet, but pro-Moscow. Um, and uh, he was tolerated by the Soviet Union, especially during Stalinist time. So when even Gomułka was jailed, Piasecki was a member of the parliament, an official uh, leader of a tiny group, but still an official leader of an official political uh, group within the, let's say, Polish coalition system of the what was called the National Front. Uh, and uh, uh, why I say that? Because it, it shows that um, Soviet leaders, and Stalin especially, were always um, aware that the Polish situation is a complicated one and that Poland is too important uh, to be treated like a, a potential um, anti-Soviet uh, uh, little uh, tiny uh, country and that to a certain extent the balance of, of power is forcing Soviet Union to Let's say, let's say, tolerate some aspect of Polish nationalism. Um, uh, and that explains why Gomułka was, of course, arrested in the 50s, but was quite well treated and uh, could be liberated in, in 1956 and come back to power and realize his, his uh, 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 wartime uh, strategy. Because we cannot say what really uh, Gomuka was thinking in 19, uh, 1938. We have no documents of um, what was uh, Gomuka thinking when he was member of the Communist Party of Poland. We don't really have also very strong uh, uh, information about what was he thinking in 1940 when he was a trade union, a local uh, grassroots trade, Soviet trade union uh, activist. But we, can, we know what, was he, what he was uh, uh, thinking during the German occupation and, of course, after the Second World War and when he got back to the power in 1956. He was also always thinking that, um, uh, 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 Paul, uh, uh, that uh, internationalism was a solidarity of sovereign and independent nations and um, his relation to towards Soviet Union was partly of course linked with with uh, ideology but partly uh, also linked with his conception of the national interest 
uh, that Soviet Union was the partner uh, to fight against um, German imperialism and, and against imperialism, because on his uh, point of view, uh, the main danger for the development of uh, a truly uh, sovereign and uh, industrialized Poland was Western capitalism. Uh, and this explained why Poland had to be uh, fr had to have friendly relation with the uh, Soviet Union. All his, most of his argumentation was always that Poland has to be with Soviet Union because it's the Polish national interest. It was mostly his argumentation, much more than uh, a Poland has to be uh, in uh, friendly relation with Soviet Union because Soviet Union is the uh, country of Lenin and October Revolution. That argumentation was existing in Gomuka, but I, I, I would say in a second second level um, uh, argumentation. The basic argumentation he was using all the time from 1943 up to 1970, and even after when he was uh, kicked out from the power, but still um, uh, uh, read, uh, writing letters and so on, all, all his life was that um, uh, national question was legitimate, that internationalism didn't mean anti-nationalism, internationalism means uh, co free cooperation of, uh, of free and sovereign nations, uh, and that was his view of 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 of, um, of, um, of socialism. So, of course, when he was uh, accused to be a right wing nationalism within the working working workers movement, there is something uh, right in it. I mean. Uh, uh, Komuka would never say about himself that he was a nationalist, but Gomuka was for sure uh, uh, somebody who was proud that he is uh, promoting the Polish national interest, what he was thinking that was the Polish national interest, and that the nas Polish national interest was linked, according to him, with the uh, world revolutionary movement. Uh, but the Polish national interest, not really the Polish working class interest. Of course, he was talking about working class, but most of his discourses, of his uh, speeches were uh, national oriented. Of course, we can say that it is because he knew that the Poles were uh, receptive to this uh, to, to this discourse much more easily than they would have been receptive to the, let's say, proletarian discourse. That's possible. Uh, uh, Gomuka was very aware also of the fact that the big majority of Polish nation uh, at the time were, were peasants, and that the peasants in Poland, especially in Poland, the majority of peasants were not of proletarian um, uh, ideology. The majority of peasants had the petit bourgeois, uh, little uh, owners, owner uh, 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 tradition, and that explains why um, um, Gomuka was very let's say, careful not to uh, accelerate the collectivization process. But in fact, if we observe situation uh, 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 basically, uh, we can also understand that in the 50s, during the, the time that supposedly Stalinist hardliner were in power in Poland, the collectivization process was not realized. In 1956, so when Gomuka took the power, only 25% of the land was collectivized. It was the big difference with other socialist countries. And um, in fact, um, Gomuka allowed people who went in, in cooperative to dissolve them and and take back the the, the land uh, as private owners. But at the end of the Gomuka era, we had the same statistic like in 1956. It means during Gomuka time, Gomuka was still pushing toward collectivization, but in a rather smooth way. But the result was the same. As I told you, in 1956, 
uh, uh, three quarter of the land was private and one quarter was collectivized. At the end of Gomuka, exactly the same, one um, uh, quarter was collectivized and three quarter were private. The difference between Gomuka time and Bierut time is that at the Bierut time, most collectivized land were uh, so-called cooperatives. And at the Gomuka time, most of the collectivized land were state uh, farms. But Pegier, uh, Polskie Gospodarstwa Rolne. But but statistically, we had the same situation in 1955 and in 1970, one one fourth, one fourth, and three fourths. Um, and so we 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 can understand Gomuka was also in favor of collectivization, but in a smooth way, in a long-term way, uh, uh, and not in a, uh, um, let's say, uh, 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 forced way like they did in Hungary, Germany, in Eastern Germany, in Romania, or in Czechoslovakia. Because Gomuka was... Uh, I, I don't know really what he was uh, feeling emotionally, and it's not important to, to understand, to, to know what he was feeling. But uh, uh, Gomuka was convinced, that's for sure, that with the Polish peasants, you cannot force them um, uh, to uh, collectivization uh, because they are petit bourgeois. Um, and you have to, 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 to push them slowly in that direction uh, and that uh, to conquer the hearts, let's say, of Polish peasants. Uh, you have also to talk to them about the nation, the nationality, the patriotism, uh, and not, not take, talk to them uh, about the um, friendship with Soviet Union on, on ideological base, but on friendship of Soviet Union uh, on national interest um, uh, argumentation. And this is uh, Gomuka. Uh, we can call it opportunistic, and to a certain extent, extent, it is opportunistic because it is something middle of the road. It's something which is not really Marxist-Leninist, uh, uh, that's for sure. But on the other side, it's uh, it's not completely social democratic in that sense. That uh, uh, still officially the, the 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 goal, the final goal, um, is to uh, um, finish with private property and the final goal is also some form of internationalism uh, um, but uh, not the uh, let's say what what uh, um, was called in the 50s in the Soviet ah. Union cosmopolitan uh, internationalism but something like a a coalition of free nation uh, promoting socialism, socialism on world scale. So, of course, this conception can be considered as not truly Marxist uh, and can be, of course, um, criticized on Marxist ground. But um, to a certain extent, Gomuka was, a, was quite a good representative of the mainstream Polish feelings of that time. Uh, it means the mainstream feelings the peasant had. And you, you have to acknowledge the fact that uh, in 1945, 75 percent of the Polish society were, were peasants. And peasants had that feeling. I mean, they were not uh, uh, Marxist, that's for sure. They were not uh, in favor of collectivization. They didn't really have a sympathy for Soviet Union because they heard in Soviet Union you have Kolkos, and uh, and they they thought Kolkos was uh, was uh, something like a, a, a dictatorship on them. They, they they were against collectivization, that's for sure. Um, uh, uh, so uh, they 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 supported Gomuka and and and, and communist policies for the first time uh, for the first step when communist made the uh, um, uh, agrarian reform and give gave to the peasant land from the big landowners on that ground they were 
for communists. But as soon as they received land uh, uh, from the landowners, they didn't want it to, 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 to go uh, further. And uh, uh, during the Gomuka time, to a certain extent, we can understand that Gomuka was protecting little Polish peasantry for the, from the world market, from the world capitalist market. And um, uh, that's why we can say that Poland was something like a skansen or a reservation uh, in, on, on the world scale because um, uh, Poland, Poland didn't want the capitalist way, uh, the Western capitalist way uh, 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 went. It means the, the way to destroy uh, little property. Uh, and on the other side, it didn't went the Soviet way, uh, who created big uh, cooperatives, the Cold War, um, uh, uh, and some uh, and 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 Gomu Poland was the middle of the road between the the the, the radical, uh, let's say, ultra liberal policies of the West and the uh, radical, let's say, uh, uh, collectivization and uh, socialist uh, uh, agricultural policies in the East. Uh, and for tactical reason, the Stalin times, and of course. Uh, after Stalin, uh, 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 it was uh, uh, even more obvious, accepted this, uh, this uh, situation in Poland because Soviet Union needed Poland as an intermediary, intermediary uh, country uh, in its relation with Western Europe. And Poland was always used during Gomułka time and during Gerek time as the, let's say, um, um, uh, intermediary uh, 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 leadership, which had better relation with Western countries like France, for example, like England, but mostly France uh, and even United States uh, to play the role of of uh, of um, a compromise between East and West. And that's also why uh, wherever you had a, 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 a strong crisis between Soviet Union, uh, Soviet camp, let's say, socialist camp and, and Western camp, very often Poland was used, for example, in the military um, commission in the Middle East, in Vietnam, in Korea. Most of the time it was Poles, Polish soldiers that were sent there, not Soviet soldiers, not Romanian soldiers, not East German or Czechoslovak soldiers, but Polish soldiers, because um, uh, Soviet uh, uh, wanted to use Poland as the, the <laughs> best Soviet friend. Uh, 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 relatively accepted in Western countries. Uh, and this is what Gomuka, uh, 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 we can say, personifies. But in the same time, we have to re recognize Gomuka was a very loyal member of the socialist uh, community because in 1968, he was one of the strongest uh, uh, leader advocating uh, a Soviet intervention in Czechoslovakia because he was fearing Czechoslovakia is going west, is going capitalistic, and uh, in fact, we can um, we can think that uh, Gomuka and Walter Ulbricht, the, the East German leader, uh, were the real, truly true organizers of the um, Warsaw Pact intervention in Czechoslovakia, because when we look at the discussion that prepared this intervention, Brezhnev looked a little bit more uh, uncertain than uh, Gomuka and Ulbricht, which were hardliner uh, in this intervention, and Kadar of Hungary, who was the, the less uh, 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 um, uh, um, 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 let's say pro-Soviet intervention in Czechoslovakia. We can say Kadar, the leader of Hungary, was the right wing at that time. Uh, Brezhnev was the center, and Gomuka Ulbricht was the left uh, in 1968. Uh, and that's quite interesting, and we have to understand. But then we. We, we have also to understand, because on that reunion, the Marxist-Leninist argumentation, uh, um, it was, of course, a, real, a, a, a 
reunion. It was a secret reunion, but now we have, of course, the, 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 the uh, documents uh, and the discourse and the speeches of these lead of all leaders, and we see that Gomuka and Ulbricht were using purely uh, ideological uh, Marxist-Leninist argumentation, but we can also. Uh, 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 suppose that the uh, true reason Gomuka was uh, uh, advocating uh, Soviet intervention in Czechoslovakia was that he was uh, uh, um, um, uh, fearing that Czechoslovakia uh, would go pro, let's say, German imperialism. Uh, and then we can also assume that it was also for national reason, protecting Poland against German uh, imperialism, that he was advocating Soviet intervention in Czechoslovakia. But in his speeches in to, to Brezhnev and to the all uh, Warsaw Pact leadership, uh, he was using mostly Marxist-Leninist argumentation and not really national um, patriotic um, argumentation. <clears throat> okay, uh, you are um, answer. You did answer uh, three question mm -hmm. which I don't, don't, didn't ask. So uh, thank you. Uh, but uh, I want to ask you um, in, um, other question which I didn't plan. Uh, it is one question, but it is the three part of the question. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, first question, could you uh, briefly uh, give uh, the, main, uh, the main difference between the Communist Party of Poland and ah. Polish Workers' Party? Briefly, what is the, the KPP and PPR? Um, and uh, second question, it is um, why? Um, do you think that Stalin in 1937-38, did, did he uh, know that uh, after Second World Bruno, are you there? Uh, because yes, yes, yes. I, Why? I, there is a problem. I, you, you have problem with connection, I think. Uh, do, do, do you think that the um, uh, Soviet Union um, planned uh, that Poland uh, after uh, that will be war with Germany and after this war Poland will be in the camp of uh, socialists? And uh, if, if, if it is true, uh, is uh, do you think that this uh, liquidation of the Communist Party of Poland, it is it was necessary to build uh, a socialist Poland? That uh, my question is that uh, um, it do you think that it was possible creating the uh, socialist Poland with the uh, party like uh, KPP? So this is my question, uh, but wait uh, uh, 30 seconds, I will find a charger for my phone, because it, it will be dead. Uh, uh -huh.
okay uh, small problem okay so, we, 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 okay so we, we i can talk yes yes you can okay. talk yeah so basically the difference of between the communist party of poland pre-war communist party of poland and the polish workers party the ppr uh, during the second world war and after basically the difference is the national question you can see it even in the name communist party of poland was called communist party of poland so to show it's not a national based party it is the party of the communist in Poland, whatever um, uh, your origin is. I mean, uh, you are in Poland, but you can be Pole, you can be Jewish, you can be Ukrainian, whatever you want, and you are in Poland. Polish Workers' Party, and the name is coming from Moscow, the, 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 when the Communist International decided that there should be a, a new party in Poland uh, in 1942, uh, um, there was a discussion in the Comintern what will be the name of that party. And um, uh, the question, the, the word communist was eliminated uh, so to uh, make possible people not communist, but for, let's say from socialist uh, uh, background to, to join. And the second question was that it was supposed to be a Polish party. It means a party made for Poles, not a party of Poland, but a party of Poles. And this is basically important. So in that way, we can say that Gomuka was not, didn't invent the situation um, because it was a situation that was already taken into account in Moscow by Soviet communists uh, and also um, taken into account uh, by uh, people in the Polish communist movement, which were not of Polish ethnical origin, especially from Jewish origin, that uh, understood, let's say, that you have to take into account the national question if you want realistically fight for a socialist Poland. What made the, the, the difference after the Second World War is that, as I told you earlier, uh, the PPR was founded in Poland, in occupied Poland, and began to develop in under the occupation and fought against Germans and also against Polish reactionaries, but that's another question. And um, uh, it was a Polish-based party in Poland. On the same time, in, in Soviet Union, and especially in Moscow, you had uh, Polish uh, expatriates, exilees, and especially communists, uh, who were in the uh, what is called the Central Bureau of Polish Communists. And these communists were members of the Communist Party of Soviet Union. And of course, they were in Moscow, they were Polish communists, but inside the Soviet Communist Party. So when we talk about the PPR during the World War, we talk of a party that was not in Soviet Union, only in Poland. Uh, uh, in occupied Poland. But when we talk about the PPR in, uh, from 1944, it means from the moment the Soviet army began to liberate Poland, we talk of, of a party where you had the, pre, the, the wartime PPR member in Poland, like Gomułka, and uh, um, Polish communists um, uh, coming back from Soviet Union and uh, who joined the PPR. So at this moment, from 1944, in the PPR, you, you had two, two, let's say, two types of communists uh, in the leadership. You had the communists uh, who were a PPR member already from 1943, 42, 43, in uh, wartime occupied Poland, joined by communists who were not in the PPR before 1944, who were in the Soviet Communist Party, and who joined the PPR um, and the PPR leadership in 1944 and, and of course, uh, uh, the years later. So, there are, in fact, there is two PPR. There is the PPR, the, 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 the original PPR, which is a, a, a Polish territorial-based party, and you have the, the post-war PPR, who is a, a, a junction of um, a, a, a local communists with um, a, a, a repatriated communists from Soviet Union. And this uh, mixture of communists 
that spend their, their wartime life in Poland and in Soviet Union created from the very beginning tensions. And these tensions, you find them uh, um, for all the post-war er period. Uh, and to a certain extent, we can say that Moscow, Stalin, uh, was trying to be an arbitrary between these two factions. Um, and this situation is not typically Polish. You have the same situation in the French Communist Party. You have the same situation in the Italian Communist Party. And what is very, very, very interesting, you have the same situation in the Belarusian Communist Party. It means after the Second World War, there are tensions between the Belarusian partisan communists, which were uh, fighting German occupation in the Belarusian uh, uh, occupied uh, Belarusia, and Belarusian communists who emigrated, let's say, with the Soviet army in 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 Moscow and, and, and non-occupied Soviet Union. And after the Second World War, especially in the 60s, you have you had very strong tension in the Belarusian party between Masherov who was the general secretary of the Belarusian Communist Party and who was an old partisan, uh, an old um, a militant of the, of the, 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 the secret uh, army against the German occupation and communists coming from uh, Soviet, uh, internal Soviet Union and who came back uh, after uh, 1945. And what is interesting, because we have always the propaganda, the Western propaganda, which is always telling that uh, Soviet leadership was always in favor of the ones who were in Moscow and who were controlled by Soviet Union and against uh, uh, all national communists. And, 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 and low, let's say national communists, and it's not really the case. We we we, we can observe, especially Stalin. Uh, he he was aware that uh, the communists that had roots in the um, internal uh, resistance movement were important, and to some extent, he tried to protect them when they were too much, too too strongly uh, attacked by the, um, let's say, uh, Soviet-trained uh, uh, Soviet national communists. Uh, so when we observe, for example, um, the relation the, 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 the Soviet apparatus had toward Gomułka and toward, for example, Berman, which is which was the the, the chief of the of the secret police of the state security police in in, in during the, the the Stalin era. Um, we can have the impression that Moscow tolerated Berman, but didn't let him uh, go um, uh, to the end of his. Uh, um, repressive, let's say, measures against, uh, let's say, national communists, uh, and that national communists were to a certain extent under some protection of Moscow. Uh, so, so not to be tried, um, and it's not only the question of 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 Gomuka, It's also the question of, of a lot of 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 let's say parties and communists like Mozart and so on, uh, which were we cannot say under the protection of Moscow, but uh, Moscow didn't didn't really accept the most hardline so-called Stalinist policies in Poland. Uh, and when, when I say so-called Stalinist, I, I, I want to tell uh, that it was it was uh, why I, I, I tell Stalinist because Stalin was much less Stalinist than some Stalinists uh, in in Eastern European or in Western European countries, uh, because Stalin was a, a very a very realistic man and he knew that um, it is normal that in the life you have different factions, different orientation, and if you want to build socialism, you must have uh, you must take into account the real balance of power in every country. And uh, Stalin was aware that Polish society was a quite nationalistic society for historical reason, which are objective, uh, 19th century occupation and so on and so on. We can, uh, of course, like that or not, but anyway, we have to take it into account. And Stalin were really aware that Polish society 
uh, could not accept any political regime that would not use the national feelings. Um, and uh, that's the reason why, for example, he uh, he didn't accept uh, um, the uh, idea to make the Polish coat of arms, uh, let's say, uh, rebuilt in the Soviet style, uh, which were some communists in Poland wanted to have to have a, a, a Polish eagle, let's say, Sovietized, and uh, he refused that. He, didn't, he, he, he told Poles not to, to do that because uh, Paul would not accept it. Uh, he didn't accept, for example, also the idea to put a red star on Polish flags um, uh, and so on, because he, he was, his opinion that was that it would, it would be uh, counterproductive. Uh, and when the, the, the Polish communists went to Moscow to uh, to, to 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 show them in in 1952 the Polish People's Republic Constitution, uh, he 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 um, uh, he criticized some aspects of this constitution uh, because of being too um, too less Polish national. Uh, and to less uh, uh, patriotic. So uh, we have to think to take into account the fact that Stalin was not the hardliner Stalinist we can uh, imagine, uh, and and some Stalinists were not uh, so uh, were not exactly supported by by Stalin. Stalin managed was trying to make a balance, of course, between different factions, um, and of course it was very difficult. We, we have to to understand Stalin. All of his career of Stalin in Soviet Union also is very important. Is that we must understand that Stalin is um, uh, much more open-minded than a lot of Stalinist propaganda made made about him. Stalin was a, in fact, we would say I would say Stalin was a dialectical, uh, a Marxist uh, uh, politician, and uh, some um, so-called Stalinists. Uh, didn't really understand what was what what is dialectic, um, and uh, they were quite dogmatic. Uh, uh, and Stalin was not so dogmatic as it uh, as they accuse him about. Um, so I think that uh, 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 that explains why the people of Poland was something of a, com a compromise uh, during Gomuka times, but also during the the so-called. Stalinist era was a compromise uh, 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 um, uh, regime between, let's say, the long-term Marxist uh, objective and the short-term reality of the Polish society. Uh, and to a certain extent, the Gomuka is the best, uh, let's say, uh, personification of this uh, compromise uh, what explains that Gomuka was the leader of People's Poland uh, about um, uh, in the longest time? Because he was the leader of People's Poland from 1944 up to 1948, and he began he went he he went back under power in 1956 to 1970. So more or less half of the People's Poland history is Gomuka times history, um, and um, this was made. Uh, under the uh, acceptance of Soviet Union, first time during the Stalin era, and later during the um, Khrushchev and, um, and Brezhnev era. But in the same time, we have to take into account, as I, I told you, that, for example, um, even if Gomuka was always loyal to the socialist con camp belonging, and I told you about the 1978 uh, especially situation, uh, in the same time, um, Gomuka was one of the few leaders in Eastern Europe that when the split between Maoist China and Soviet Union and between Stalinist, let's say, Albania and Soviet Union uh, 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 burst, uh, Gomuka was the less pro-Soviet uh, oriented against those two countries. Uh, because he was um, respecting, to a large extent, the, um, let's say, the choices 
of the Chinese and Albanians, much more than were doing the same, the Czechs or the, um, the German communists or the Hungarian communists. Um, on, that, on that point, we can say that uh, uh, even if the Stalin portrait uh, or statues were in China and Albania, um, for Gomuka, this was not uh, so disturbing like in, uh, let's say, in East Germany or in Czechoslovakia or in Soviet Union. Uh, so it's difficult to make out of Gomuka a very clear answer because it's a quite complicating person in a quite complicating time and in a quite complicating society because the Polish society is um, is complicated. Now the question of the Pre-war KPP is a very complicated question because um, we can say that the Polish Communist Party uh, had very strong local roots, not national roots, because it was a purely internationalistic uh, and radically internationalistic party, as I told you. But on the other side, it was very, it was purely um, uh, local. Uh, why? Why? Because we have to take into account that the split in the Polish working movement um, didn't occur because of the Soviet, uh, the, the Russian Revolution. All over the world, you had communist party that um, uh, were created because of the um, uh, their point, the point of view within the worker movement towards Soviet, Soviet Russia, and then Soviet Union. In Poland, it was not the case because the split. Uh, 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 op uh, uh, happened much earlier. The split between the PPS, it means the, the, the Polish Socialist Move, uh, Party, and the SDKPIL, the Social Democrat, the, uh, Democratic Party, um, uh, 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 existed from the 19th century. And in fact, the SDKPIL changed name in, in, in 1918 um, to, 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 to became the Co Communist Workers' Party of Poland, because first it was called the Football Communist Party Workers Party, before the time it was called the Communist Party of Poland. It was first KPRP and then only KPP. Um, uh, uh, and uh, uh, it was just a change of name, basically. Um, it was not a new party. The difference that was that uh, the SDKPIL accepted within its ranks uh, the left wing of the Socialist Party, and that formally we can say that uh, both parties uh, uh, united under the name of Communist Party. But basically, um, the Communist Party tradition is was not created by uh, uh, Lenin. Of course, Lenin was respected, but we cannot say that the Communist Party was created under the Lenin ba ba uh, banner. It was created on, under the Rosa Luxemburg and Felix Dzerzhinsky banner, which, of course, this banner joined the, um, uh, the Leninist uh, uh, revolution. But basically, uh, uh, um, the, 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 the fundamentals of the Polish communist ideology was first Rosa Luxemburg and then Lenin. And in the 20s, when you had manifestation in Poland, you had uh, always the portraits. It's symbolical, but it's important to, 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 to show that. You had always the portrait of the so-called 3L. It means Luxembourg, Lenin, Liebknecht. Uh, so the leader of the Polish communist movement Rosa Luxemburg, of the Russian communist movement Lenin, and of the German communist movement Karl Liebknecht. Um, and, uh, 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 and that's important, because if we understand that, uh, we understand that on the national question, the communist party was much more Luxembourgist than Leninist. And um, that's one of the reasons the relation of, between Communist Party uh, of Poland and Communist Party of Soviet Union was always, to a certain extent, com uh, complicated. Because paradoxically, we can say that Soviet communists, which were much more aware of the national question and especially the Polish national question, than the Polish communists, who were much more, um, let's say, un, uh, un nationally oriented than the Soviet ones. 
And it created quite a lot of problems within the Communist Party of Poland, uh, and also, of, of course, also a lot of problems in the relation between Communist Party and uh, and um, Soviet Party. And that explained also why um, Polish Communist Party was one of the late Communist Party in the world that began to criticize Trotsky. Trotsky was... Uh, 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 criticized all over the communist movement earlier than the Communist Party accepted to criticize Trotsky. Trotsky finally was, of course, criticized and denounced by the Polish Communist Party, but this process was much harder in Poland than in other Communist Party. And this also can explain uh, why um, the uh, Communist International, the Communist leadership, Stalin, uh, always looked at the Polish Communist Party as a strange party, not really, not really, not really uh, a, a Leninist one. Um, not to talk of, about Stalin, but uh, uh, only about Leninism. And this is important uh, because, of course, that's for sure, Polish Communist Party um, was an opposition illegal party, and of course it was penetrated by uh, uh, Polish state security uh, uh, police. That's that's obvious. It, it would it would have been ab abnormal uh, that such a party wouldn't have been penetrated uh, by this police. Um, the question now we can ask is that when they decided to uh, dissolve the Communist Party on Poland in 1938, it, this was this decision uh, exaggerated. It was. It means it was this party so penetrated by the secret police that this party was not um, uh, was not uh, serious. Let's say in, in his communism, in its communism, uh, or not. And that's the debate we had in the communist movement after the death of Stalin. And that explains why in 1955, I, and I, I say 1955, not 1956. In 1955, the Soviet Communist Party, but also the Italian and the French Communist Party, who were at the lead, leadership of the of the Communist International at the time, um, the Polish Communist Party were, was dissolved. In 1955, they they decided that the decision to dissolve the Communist Party was wrong, um, and that this, this party shouldn't have been dissolved. Um, uh, uh, so why I say it's important is 1955 because it means that this decision was taken before the um, 20th Congress of the Communist Party of Soviet Union, and to a certain extent we have to 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 think about. Uh, the situation in 1955, can we say that in 1955 the Soviet uh, party was already, let's say, on the Khrushchev line or not already and or not entirely? That's, a, that's an important issue we have to think about. But anyway, the, situa the, the question of the uh, Communist Party, of pre-war Communist Party of Poland is important. Uh, 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 not only because of this uh, um, um, of this question, uh, it was the party penetrated by the state police, but basically because the uh, uh, Communist Party ideology, Pol Communist Party of Poland ideology, was always, uh, let's say, quite original comparing with the Moscow line uh, and comparing, of course, with all other uh, Communist Party line uh, all over the world. Uh, we have to take into account, in fact, that there are, there are only two Communist Party in the world that, that were dissolved by the in, uh, Communist International, of course, for different reasons, but uh, it's the Polish Communist, the Communist Party of Poland and the Communist Party of Korea. It were the two parties that had to, uh, that were dissolved by the Communist International. All other party uh, uh, had sometimes different different views concerning uh, different um, uh, issues, especially, for example, um, relation with, between the Communist Party of China and the Communist Party of Soviet Union in the 
30s were not always very, very um, um, uh, friendly. They had tension what uh, what the communists should do in China. But still, of course, uh, the Communist Party of China was always, uh, it was out of question to expel them from the uh, Communist International. Uh, so we have to think about the, the real reason why the Communist Party of Poland was uh, this sort. But, but of course, we can assume the fact that from the very beginning, um, the Polish Communist Party was of, based on a different orientation, especially on the national question. Well, I would say that the, 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 the Communist Party of Poland anti-national ideology was the, the basic, uh, uh, one of the basic principles of that party. Uh, because it was on the Luxembourgist line. Uh, uh, of course, Rosa Luxemburg, everybody uh, uh, agree with that, was a, one of the uh, best revolutionary uh, in the beginning of the 19th, of the 20th century. Uh, she is a, a very intelligent and creative uh, activist, um, and she uh, deserves, of course, uh, the, all the respect for her life and for her death. But uh, we have also to take into account that um, Lenin and Luxembourg had different views on a lot of questions, of a lot of issues, and especially of the national question. And that the Leninist view was not the view of the Communist Party of Poland. Communist Party of Poland was on the Luxembourgist view that uh, nation have to disappear in the in the future. Um, uh, and Lenin was much more, let's say, uh, um, uh, moderate on that question. Uh, because, of, uh, in fact, we can say that Lenin adopted the Stalin view of the national question, which was more or less based on the, uh, let's say, Austro-Marxist point of view concerning the national question, not political or other political question. Of course, that uh, of course, uh, uh, Austro-Marxists were were right wing. Uh, on social question as uh, and and Bolsheviks were not and Stalin was not but on national question uh, Stalin accepted most of the of the um, uh, of the ideas uh, austro marxist developed uh, uh, that were completely opposed to the Rosa Luxemburg Rosa Luxemburg um, uh, uh, point of view of national question um, okay, Bruno. Uh, thank you very much for uh, all your um, all your responses. Uh, I would like to ask you: Do you have time? Because um, uh, I would like to make with you. Um, I, ha I have another question for you, but uh, I think that we have to ma uh, make a pause now and. Um, May make uh, third episode about uh, the the uh, Poland in the 1960s in the okay. in interesting. the time uh, that in the time of the Gomułka rulings because I want to know what do you think about uh, about uh, Polish society. In, yeah. in the question of the building socialism. So, do you have time now? now and I, we can because I have to to go out to my uh, ah. uh, daughter. Uh, so we can. Okay, meet. okay. Uh, I will. We will. We will. Um, we'll to, we'll contact. Okay. We will. We will contact. So. Um, um, but you, you, you didn't uh, answer uh, one question, which I said. Yes, that's possible. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, the, the, the question was, uh, did you think that the uh, Soviet Union uh, planned, because you said that there was two parties, the Communist Party of Poland and Communist Party of Korea, and in these two countries, after the after Second World War, uh, there are constructing uh, and there are construction of the socialism. Yes, yes, of so, course. 
it, it, uh, we, we can say that that uh, decision uh, was good because in the uh, the uh, in France or Italy uh, we don't have uh, we don't we didn't have so uh, do you think that this dissolution of the party it was only because this reason which he said that uh, Luxembourgism uh, and um, uh, Polish uh, secret police or they are preparing uh, ground uh, for something something I, bigger I, I, I doubt that in 1938 uh, Stalin and Soviet leadership did plan very specifically what will happen in Poland in the next uh, uh, decade but uh, for me, it's quite sure that <coughs> at the end of the 30s, Soviet communists uh, did take into account the fact that the, Pol the Communist Party of Poland failed to um, uh, create in Poland a mass movement, taking into account the fact that the miscontent of the Polish society was very, very strong at the end of the 30s, but was mostly uh, directed by the Polish Peasant Party in the countryside and by the Polish Socialist Party in the, um, in the working in the urban areas. We can, we can think, of course, that the Polish Communist Party uh, didn't, took, didn't take into account uh, all elements, and um, that, to a certain extent, a complete reorganization of the communist movement had to be uh, had to be uh, carried on, so to make it uh, successful. And in a certain sense, of course, we can criticize this decision or that one, uh, but in a certain sense, that's obvious that um, the situation. Uh, when there were no communist party in 1939 was a, a let's say a difficult situation but in the same time it created conditions to create a new communist party that was successful but whatever we can say uh, we can think about the polish workers party the polish workers party managed to create a much stronger party during the Second World War. It means the Polish uh, Workers' Party has much more, much more members in 1943 than the Communist Party of Poland had uh, um, uh, five years earlier. That's a fact. I mean, we have to take that into account. Um, uh, um, and uh, it managed to create an army, a secret army, the, the People's Army. Uh, uh, which was a real uh, military force, um, uh, that's fact. And uh, uh, this uh, party managed uh, uh, after the war, and we have also to take that into account, uh, it managed to create a new state. I mean, whatever we think about PPR, uh, uh, it was really not uh, easy for a, a, a relatively tiny little party to uh, just administrate a country, to create state organizations, to create a state security system, to create uh, um, foreign policy, to create a reindustrialization program, to create a reconstruction program. And um, uh, PPR was able to realize all that uh, 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 in a very short amount of time, because basically we, we can say that in 1947-1948, the basic institution of the state were reconstructed under PPR's leadership. So, I mean, realistically speaking, uh, whatever we can criticize about uh, Gomuka, Stalin, Bierut, and all uh, these people, uh, uh, all together, they managed to create a new state which were which was functioning and basic basically um, uh, uh, giving answers to the basic problems of the Polish society. It means uh, to the basic problems of the peasants. The peasants in the forties were rather a happy social class, um, uh, 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 and in the pre-war period, 
the problem of the Communist Party was that it was a relatively strong party within the working class in cities. It was the minority, but a strong minority among uh, uh, urban working class. But it is a party that didn't really manage to create a, a strong uh, base in the uh, um, rural areas, in the peasantry. And the peasantry, as I told you, in 1945, it was 75% of the society. So how can you lead a country if you have against you 75% of the population? And that was the success of the PPR. It was the fact that they managed to, cre to, to, to conquer at least part of the peasant population on their side. So we have to be realistic. We can, of course, uh, 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 consider this was uh, uh, not good because uh, petit bourgeois uh, uh, feelings in the peasantry, not really proletarian ones, Marxist ones, and so on and so on. But uh, we have to deal with the reality. Uh, the reality is that uh, 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 in a lot of so future socialist countries, the big majority of the society to, the, were peasants. Um, that peasants is an, let's say, a opportunistic uh, a class between the, 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 the petit bourgeois and the proletarian ideologies. But anyway, uh, you have to take into account this fact uh, if you really want to uh, to control a country, I mean, I, 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 I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, uh, even if the Soviet har army would have, of course, pure theory, theory, but even if the Soviet army arrived in Poland in 1937, I think the communists wouldn't be uh, able to control that country and to create a state apparatus at that time because they, they, they had no roots in the countryside. In 1943, you had uh, uh, party cells in, in, in countryside. Uh, you had a uh, uh, people's army in the countryside. You had all this structure, uh, which uh, possible uh, the social revolution. I mean, after the war, when you created, when the new, new regime created the, the militia, the militia was created out of people coming from the countryside that joined this militia. And without this militia, the people's Poland will have never, uh, uh, wouldn't have um, exist. So maybe you can criticize that the people's Poland was not the ideal socialist Poland you can dream of, and so on, of course. But anyway, uh, I think it was the only realistic solution in 1945 um, uh, not to dream about a pure proletarian Marxist-Leninist Poland that couldn't exist at that time, but that, uh, that it created still the base for a, 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 something going in the direction of socialism. Uh, yes. I think that the, the base of PPR in 1946-47, it was not peasant, but peasant who are moving to yeah. to the cities, and they uh, they for uh, for this peasant it was the the come on the the, the level in the uh, yeah pro next social level. promotion so social promotion yes yeah, yeah, social right. promotion and to a certain extent uh, it explains also why the people's Poland disappeared because it was uh, quite a lot of peasants went on the side of communists not because of communism but because uh, social socialism uh, opened for them um, the way for social promotion so it was something rather opportunistic than ideological on the long term that's right that was the 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 uh, that created the situation that uh, uh, made um, possible the counter revolution we had in 1989 but uh, still i think that uh, uh, it is very important uh, that we have we had people's Poland, even if people's Poland doesn't exist anymore. Uh, it's a very important experience in the Polish history, which will not disappear. I mean, uh, uh, nowadays Poles have a, 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 an example of something going in the direction of socialism. You can criticize it, but still 
it is an alternative in their mind to the actual situation. And it's a much better situation than in the pre-war period, because in the pre-war period, there was no such experience. So there was no discussion in the Polish uh, um, um, uh, peasant class about socialism, except for the uh, strong minority of uh, politically uh, uh, well brought up peasants, but the mass of the, the peasants were politically passive. Uh, and because of people's Poland, the uh, people with peasant roots in Poland now, um, they have a point of, 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 of discussion. They have something uh, that can, they can compare with the actual situation. And, uh, and for me, it's a success because uh, um, uh, uh, whatever we can think about people's Poland, we have now something in Poland, like a nostalgia for people's Poland. Of course, it's very romantic. It's maybe unscientific. It's, uh, you can criticize, but still this nostalgia is nostalgia for something that was concrete, that realized some concrete things. That we, now people in Poland, they can understand what is social promotion and why uh, um, uh, 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 social promotion was possible under social and, what, and why this social promotion is impossible in capitalism. Um, the Polish young now, they know their parents came from, uh, from uh, very poor uh, rural areas and had a quite, let's say, respectable life. They know that they have not this opportunity now. Um, they, 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 what is the, 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 the future of a young Polish man or woman from a, a, a popular uh, base? To work in McDonald's or to go to England uh, and, um, and um, uh, clean the British toilets? That's the future of Polish uh, 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 people uh, uh, in the basic roots of the society. They know that they, at the people's Poland, it, they had much, much better opportunities. They know that, even if they're anti-communist. Even the, 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 the far right-wing, uh, stupid uh, uh, fascist of Poland know, more or less consciously, that they would have a better life uh, 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 under the former regime than now. They, they are mad at communists, but they are mad, in fact, at communists, not because they are communists. They are mad at communists because the communists, uh, the, the so-called communists gave power to the, to the let's, say, let's speak very frankly, to the Western shit they have now. And that's the reason of the Polish anti-communism now. The Polish anti-communism now is based on the fact that the communists, the official communists betrayed. It's not the same time, same thing like the anti-communism of pre-war Poland. The anti-communism of pre-war Poland was an ideological, reactionary, church-oriented, uh, pro-landowner uh, anti-communist anti-communism. It was a hundred percent a reactionary anti-communism. The anti-communism now is, of course, reactionary, but has some elements of. Um, um, let's say, uh, nostalgia for something like social justice, even if it's a fanatical, fascistic, uh, 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 um, anti-Semitic, anti-Arabic, anti-whatever you want, but still this element is that uh, a normal society should be a society where you have social justice. In, in, before the war, uh, anti-communism was ah, the ideal society is when we had king and, and landowners. It's not the same anti-communism. I, I would say the actual anti-communism potentially, if we find real communists in Poland in the future, uh, uh, can be quite easily defeated because uh, it will show that the anti-communists are in fact having something like a nostalgia for, for socialism, even if they don't know about it. So we have, we, we, we must work about uh, on that. But basically, um, of course, we hate the, the Polish fascist we have now. But in, the, in fact, uh, we must understand their hate 
is the hate toward a regime that betrayed them in 1989. It's not the same. And that's why I say that on the long term run, the PPR is, uh, will happen as something positive in the Polish history, in spite of the, of the opportunistic treason of the Polish United Workers direction in the 80s. So, <laughs> I don't know if I answered the real question. <laughs> ah, you, you answer, and, uh, and the better thing is that uh, you are finished with a uh, positive, uh, positive message. <laughs> that that uh, uh, we, mm, we can have hope that mm, the yeah. future is, is yeah. ours. I think the situation in, in Poland is much better than it looks like. I don't see. I don't say the situation is good. The situation is terrible. But potentially, it is much more positive now than in the 30s. And hopefully, uh, I can say that I have. I have. Um, um, I, I. I am. Um, uh, I have that. You. You have right because. Uh, uh, when we saw um, the, the the protest in the October and, yeah. and November in Poland, we saw that uh, one one small things um, in the short time uh, explode and uh, all Polish people are angry to the government. But also we saw that. Uh, there, there are potential for the protests uh, and for the um, for, for the fight with the police, but also we saw that uh, there are no political party who can. That's the, that's that's right. That's right. But that I think the potential exists. Now we have to make it it uh, functions, but the potentials ex exist, and that's. A, a party will happen because of that potential. Exactly on which form, when, how, we can discuss about it. But um, the situation is leading to a situation when we have to organize. And people are aware in Poland now that they need organization and they need some program. Uh, but they are they are tired of the existing system. That's the basic in information. Pe people in Poland do not like not only the government, not only the church uh, leadership, but they don't like the system they are living in. And that's much more important. Basically, they're against the system, even if they don't use that word. But basically, they, they don't they are anti-capitalist, even if they don't know they are anti-capitalist. <laughs> but they, they, they cannot support um, that. I mean, my, my, my cousin yesterday, who he's an active Catholic. And he sent me um, uh, 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 Christmas greetings, telling me, dear uncle, uh, uh, um, all the best for you for Christmas. And hopefully the end of the capital dictatorship. So why? I mean, <laughs> he's Catholic, he's activist in the church, but he understood what is the basic question of the society he's living in. Um, uh, ideologically, we can say, ah, oh, he's on the side of the church, but he's not. Basically, he understood that the basic problem of Poland is the capital. Uh, I, I did give this example as one example, but I mean, this example, we can, uh, all of us, we have thousands of people of, exa of such example in Poland of people, young people telling this system cannot work long. You know, we have to change system. So we have just to go to people and tell them, yes, oh, so let's work on that. <laughs> let's do it uh, uh, concretely, not only ideal, uh, ideally, but uh, concretely. Manifestations are very important against, but now we can propose you manifestation for something else. And that's this positive positive issue we we hope to work for. <laughs>
Okay, uh, we will continue this discussion about future. Okay. So thank you, Bruno, uh, and we we will sp speaking uh, briefly. We have to finish our trilogy about. The uh, Novitsky and Drovensky uh, uh, new Sinkiewicz. <laughs> okay, bye bye. Okay, bye. Hi.